was in our media plan, remember our non-traditional and traditional ways we can do it, right? So we try to figure out what the wants and needs are in the beginning because then we can kind of see where the majority of people are trying to get or also they could be, you know, doing a, um, we call it ice reports inside the military, but it's a thing where like, hey, you know, why don't you have this class to give to us because no one else offers it. So, you know, that might draw a lot of people if there's a lot of, of high demand that we see wanting that. So, those are some of the things we, when we build our customer demand through advertising. So, we'll come up with our basic things, you know, business, psychology, whatever it be. There might be a, a whole area that they want to do that that's not given to them in that country or any university that's maybe given in the States. So, who knows? Who knows if they want to learn, uh, what do you call it? Christianity, you know, you'd be surprised on some of these countries. Other religions, yeah. yeah. So, because you know, in reality, Cambodia's not going to teach that because they're like ninety percent Hindu. But then they want some. There's people that want to learn that. So, if you get a big enough demand, we'll create the class in there. But there's a catch, which I'll show you there later in, 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 in the slides. Offer new courses, like I was talking about. That's, that was pieces, but also um, it's an outdated country in a way. They're not. Um, they're still a third world. So. Some of the internet, uh, internet card, IT technology type of things, uh, electronic, um, electric engine, electronic engineering kind of classes. Those are things we can put into those into the school, being that we're of course number three in the state. So I don't think it'll be a problem. It's just of course the demand, and then provide incentives. So it goes back into the, um, the not promotion, but what was it? Um, Sorry. Thank shadows again for you. So what type of incentives? So incentives would be uh, books at a cheaper price for the, you know, for the classes. Unless, of course, you know, even though it's online like they do here, um, like I said, a lower price. I think it's $15 a class for that. Yeah, if, oh, if you get more than two classes, yeah, if you get a discount. Classes, yeah, you can do that. You can see um, if more than one person from your family joins. Yes. You, get time, you know, we can do a two for one. There, there's a bunch of different things we can come wrong with. Um, and as time goes on, we'll get to know the community and what they can afford, which will kind of balance out on, one, our cost to give these classes, but two, what can they afford? And what can we afford to give them as an incentive? Mm -hmm. Everyone is trying? Yes. All right. All right, so this is the big one I was saying about um, the prior one, which was uh, offer new courses, when you look at these three things, economic, cultural, and political, the legal environment, so you got political parties and power, protocol, and cultural sensitivity. Now, if we're gonna teach Catholic classes in a Hindu country, these guys may make or break us right here. Because they run the government there, so they have the rules in place. Now, if they want teaching another religion, it's out the window. Just like in any other class, like maybe electric engineering, they don't want us to do that because it's against something in their religion. Well, we're gonna have to pull that off because then they might have a, a law or embargo on us from bringing certain things in the country or teaching. Um, protocol, right? We need, we need to put on the protocol of how the host country does things, especially the political piece, but also you gotta look at culture because we have to be culturally sensitive to how they conduct themselves and how we should conduct ourselves so that way don't, we don't offend anybody, right? And uh, cultural sensitivity. Like I said, we gotta be aware of them because we don't want our teachers to be teaching something or say something where they get hurt or killed in a classroom. And it's a big old international incident, right? So we need to know what we can do and what we can't do when it comes to politics, basic protocol in the country, and cultural sensitivity. Yeah, an example that we have about like the cultural sensitivity and the costumes as well. It's like when the um, many Chinese businesses opened in Spain, so they have like a special agreement of one year with no taxes. It came directly from China, it was the first year. And uh, they were opening at midday. In other words, from two to five. And uh, of course the local businesses were complaining because that's just the time. So that's against the costumes in Spain. So they were like, of course, like a regular uh, local businesses were very, very upset about that because they need to have a rest as well. And they close at eight, right? Or opening on Sundays. So nowadays it's closed, basically the vast majority 
of Chinese shops, uh, small businesses are closed at, mid at midday and on Sundays, or at least part of the Sunday, before they open 24-7, like Walmart, I <laughs> right? Huh? I think the majority of that side of the, uh, the globe, they, they mostly um, half day on the sun, Saturday and close on Sundays. Correct. In, in 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 Spain, in Italy, we're talking about like small, uh, medium companies. It's like family-run companies, and then they have a couple of employees, maybe, and then they cannot afford half employees, twenty-four seven. But the fa Chinese factories like family, but they are used to work, so the working eth ethics is very different. Something that to take into account as well in Cambodia. What are their costumes? If we are we offering that when you were relating to the religion, are we offering classes when there is like the sacred time of their religion of Hinduism? Is that against the law? Right. The that's, that's why where we went earlier with the learning the political, um, the political factors and religious and cultural factors. Okay. That's the part that plays into it because we gotta learn what we can and can't do. Kind of like if we were in the Middle East. <laughs> There's, they pray five times a day. So we know their times, we just gotta incorporate that into mm -hmm. our schedule. That's right. Because they have to pray to Allah, right? Muhammad. Uh, All right, yes. I mean, it's part of the thing, because they don't do it, it's like they're, 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 you know, there's only, they won't go see their, what is it, 12 virgins, whatever it's called. <laughs> okay. All right, so, coming to our recommended actions, right? Basically and foremost, we need to make a clear, uh, a clear business plan, like I was talking about. We need to lay it out, have the MOU, MOA in agreement with not just the two EDU and MCU, I mean EDUS and MCU, but also the government because it's an international agreement. So we're crossing uh, international, uh, what do you call it? International, um, not boundary. Yeah, trade? Boundary, I guess. I guess, trade uh, agreement, international. Trade, but also uh, it's countries, you know, from, from Europe to, or Europe, America and like I said we have to know what we do as either Americans or Europeans that is not right to them we also need to know what let them know what we won't take you know we have to come to a standard of what can I think of word now um, you know understanding yeah mutual understanding between you know what we can and can't do but it, but the students also need to know how we work because we're not Cambodian Yes. Okay. So, so yeah. Like, like I said, I, I was thinking in the beginning. You know, when you when you start when you when you have your first class, you know, have your, we have your autobiography. You kind of let them know, like, hey, this is how we do things. I understand how you do things, and then you know, maybe quick Q and A, just to kind of learn, especially in the beginning of the school when it first starts. So to make sure that there's no no one stepping on anyone's toes. Or Correct. Like, like a cultural diversity yes. that we are embracing that, right. embracing the differences well, the by sex, sexual, and no like. Uh, right. Uh, other racism. Um, if we have faculty from Cambodia, they will come and train our people in the states that we may be bringing. So there's that, you know, that handoff the cultural, cultural difference. It's exchange in a way. We bring people there, we bring, and we take people there as well so we can learn from both sides. Come back and, you know, figure it out. Um, so now we'll kind of go into the business plan, but also the training protocols. Now, create a legal team for acquisition. This part's gonna come into the political play because we need to make sure that no international, you know, no international laws are broken, no local laws are broken, and no um, educational laws are broken. So that's where our legal team will come in because we wanna make sure, that's the thing that's gonna make or break our acquisition is all the legal piece. Because we can get crazy fines you know, if, if to a point where it's not even worth the acquisition. Um, having MCU inspected for infrastructure. So what it is, is this new school is pretty beat up. I'm pretty sure. So when, when we have, um, in the beginning I told you about, we have to figure out how much we're gonna need for the acquisition. That will be the part. We have to have an assessment team to figure out how bad is that campus? What do we need to fix? What needs to be fixed? Like our priorities. So if the, the project management. Yeah, if the, the, what do you call it? The, uh, the school itself is crumbling. You know, we need engineers to repatch them up, right? Concrete. If their internet, Infrastructure there is not existent. We gotta wire the whole buildings up, right? We got we gotta get the thing up to speed. We can't be living in the day of the dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> and then put our planning plan into action once acquisition is complete. So this goes back into the media plan, 
and promoting ourselves, but also making people want so to come to us. So we gotta make ourselves look like we're a fun campus. We're all about teaching and you know, learning. Win the hearts and minds of the people, they say.